Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss testing cations. We know that any salt is made up of cation and anion. For example, lithium sulfate. Lithium sulfate is made up of cation, lithium, single positive charge, and the sulfate polyatomic ion SO4 2 minus. This is the anion. So this is called the cation, lithium, and the sulfate is called the anion. Another example, sodium nitrate NaNO3 sodium is the cation and the nitrate polyatomic is the anion so any salt is made up of cation and anion we want to know how to identify the cation in the unknown salt if we have an unknown salt like this one it is powdered salt I don't know what is the cation and I don't know what is the anion in the salt today we are going to know how to know the cation Step number one, you have to put a sample of this salt in a test tube and you have to add some water to make it an aqueous solution of the salt. So now we have an aqueous solution of the unknown salt. And there are two procedures uh, to do this process, either to add some drops of sodium hydroxide or adding some drops of ammonia solution. In both cases, there is a precipitate will be formed and from the color of the precipitate, we will know the identity of the cation. The first method is adding some drops of sodium hydroxide. The seven cations that we are going to discuss today, the aluminum, Al3+, zinc Zn2+, calcium, iron 2, iron 3, chromium, and copper. So as we said that by adding some drops of the sodium hydroxide, a precipitate will be formed and from the color of the precipitate we will know the identity of the cation in both aluminum and zinc while adding some drops of sodium hydroxide a white precipitate will be formed white precipitate will be formed with aluminum and zinc also with calcium there is white precipitate is formed with the iron 2 plus, there is green precipitate is formed. And with the iron 3 plus, there is red brown precipitate formed. So with the iron 2 plus, green precipitate will be formed. And with the iron 3 plus, red brown precipitate. With the chromium, also green precipitate will be formed. And with the copper Cu2 plus, light blue precipitate is formed. Okay, now there are some cations that have the same colors. So we have to add excess of the sodium hydroxide. And either the precipitate will dissolve to form a solution, and maybe the precipitate will remain because the precipitate is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. Actually, there are three cations that dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide. The chromium, the aluminum, and the zinc so these three cations that will dissolve in the excess sodium hydroxide so both the aluminum and the zinc their precipitates will dissolve when we add excess sodium hydroxide to form colorless solution but with the calcium it will not dissolve so the white precipitate will remain because it is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide with the iron 2 it will not dissolve and the iron 3 plus also it will dis it will not dissolve so both of them are insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide which means that the green precipitate remains and the red brown precipitate also remains with excess sodium hydroxide but the chromium is one of the cations that dissolve with excess sodium hydroxide so by adding more sodium hydroxide the green precipitate will dissolve to form green solution. Okay, the copper Cu2 plus, it doesn't dissolve, so the light blue precipitate remains. Okay, the second method is to add some drops of ammonia solution. As we said, to test the cation, you will add sample of the salt in a test tube and you will add some water 
to the test tube to make an aqueous solution of the unknown salt. And then now we are going to add some drops of ammonia solution. Mostly it is the same observation like sodium hydroxide with some differences. As we said, with the alumnum and zinc, also with the ammonia solution, white precipitate will be formed with both aluminum and zinc. With the calcium, there are two things. Maybe one of them will happen. Either no precipitate will be formed or maybe slight white precipitate is formed. Slight white precipitate. The iron 2 and the iron 3 plus, the same observations like sodium hydroxide. So green and red brown. With the chromium, there is a little bit difference from sodium hydroxide. Actually, the precipitate is gray green rather than green precipitate. So it is gray green precipitate with chromium and with the copper light blue precipitate as before. So the only difference is with calcium and chromium. Calcium, maybe no white precipitate is formed or slightly it will be formed. But with the chromium, rather than green precipitate, it is gray green with the ammonia solution. Now we will add excess. There are two cations only that will dissolve with um, excess ammonia solution, which is the copper and zinc. Only copper and zinc dissolve in excess ammonia. So the aluminum, it forms white precipitate, but it is insoluble in excess. But the zinc, it's a precipitate will dissolve to form colorless solution. It will form colorless solution. The calcium, there is no change will happen. Nothing will happen. Both of the iron 2 and the iron 3 are insoluble. Even the chromium also, it is insoluble in excess ammonia solution. It is really important to know that the copper, it formed light blue precipitate with the ammonia solution. But when you add excess of the ammonia solution, the light blue precipitate will dissolve to form dark blue solution. To form dark blue solution. And this is really important in the testing of copper using the ammonia solution. So when you add excess of the ammonia solution, you will observe that the light blue precipitate of the copper will dissolve to form dark blue solution. Now there are some cations that we cannot test them using this procedure, actually because their hydroxides are soluble in water. Because these precipitates that we wrote their colors, they are the metal hydroxides of the unknown cation. These are the metal hydroxide of the unknown cation. For example, the light blue precipitate of copper, it is copper hydroxide precipitate. The green precipitate of the iron, it is iron hydroxide precipitate. And we have to mention that the iron hydroxide precipitate, which is green, if it is left for some minutes, it will be oxidized to the iron hydroxide 3, which is red-brown. So there is color change from green to red-brown. Now there are some cations that we couldn't use the, these two methods with them, which is group one cations because their hydroxides are soluble in water. So we will carry out the flame test. To carry out the flame test, we have to bring the salt under test that will be tested and we will put it on the tip of wire. This wire is unreactive metal. It is made up of unreactive metal like nichrome. And you have to clean the wire using hydrochloric acid to remove impurities. We have to clean it with HCl to remove the impurities. And we will put a sample of the salt on the tip of the wire. And then we will make it in contact with the Bunsen burner flame. Actually, the Bunsen burner flame, it is blue. Once it is in contact with the salt, the color of the flame will change. With lithium, the flame becomes red, as you see. Any salt contains lithium. It is in contact with the Bunsen burner flame, it turns red. With the sodium, the flame turns yellow. With the sodium, it turns yellow. And with the potassium, the color of the flame turns lilac. It is actually a little bit like the purple color. It is lilac flame. 
and with the copper it is blue green flame with the copper blue green flame okay so again red with lithium yellow with sodium and lilac with potassium and blue green with copper the last cation that we will discuss today is the ammonium cation if there is a salt containing ammonium cation you have to add any alkali this is a salt which contains ammonium ions we will add any alkali for example sodium hydroxide because when you add the ammonium salt ammonium salt plus alkali there are three products that are formed salt plus water plus the ammonia gas and this is the observation that will confirm the presence of the ammonium ions so there is salt and water and the ammonia gas this is the observation there is bubbling will happen when you add any alkali to the ammonium salt how to confirm that this gas is the ammonia gas actually we will bring damp red litmus paper once it is in contact with the ammonia gas it turns blue because the ammonia gas is alkaline and the ammonia gas it has pungent smell which is easily detected so this is another observation so the two observations of the ammonia gas it turns damp red litmus paper to blue and it has pungent smell these are testing cations thanks for watching